Now that we have all watched Girl on Fire's full interview, I want to share a bit more. First off, I apologize about my audio during that interview. We have corrected the problem. As you can see here, we have a microphone and I will be using that from now on. So that issue has been corrected and hopefully it won't be a problem again. A little background about Girl on Fire. Many know her as Little Red from some of her YouTube videos. That YouTube channel is linked in her interview. And uh, I just want you to know that Dr. John and I have met both Little Red or Girl on Fire, as well as her husband, uh, Zoom style meeting. And we've talked to them face to face and uh, for hours, even beyond the interview. And I want you to know that they were very, very nervous to share their story. And the reason that they shared it, which they mentioned a bit in the interview, but I want to say it again, is they have a lot of shame about their story. And they believe that other people are not sharing what happened to them when it comes to Julie Rowe and Chad Daybell because of shame. And they feel that it is so important to share and that it's so important that other people share. They put those negative feelings that they have aside and did this because they felt it was so important. And I hope that um, Girl on Fire and her husband coming forward will allow other people to feel safe coming forward. Now, Eric Smith. Eric Smith, you saw in this video and you heard about him. He was mentioned by Girl on Fire and her husband. And so I felt it was only fair to reach out to Eric Smith and ask him to if he wants to clarify anything or uh, make a statement. And he did. Yesterday, he sent me a lengthy statement, and I'm going to soon read the whole thing. I really appreciate it, and I actually think it clarifies um, a lot of what was going on. And so in just a little bit, I'm going to share that statement from Eric Smith. But first, before I do that, I want to share one more thing from Girl on Fire's interview that did not make the final cut of the interview that I just aired. So to set the stage with what you're about to hear is I'm asking Girl on Fire to help me understand multiple probations just a little bit more. I'm asking specifically about evil spirits and how they can come back reincarnated as another person who's also deemed evil by this group. And when I use evil, dark, evil, dark, those are interchangeable. We're referring to people that Julie and Chad decide are dark. And so they're talking about those spirits being reincarnated. And then after we discuss that, and, and you'll hear a little bit about Oprah, because Oprah, you know, as we all know, um, is supposedly evil as well, at least according to Julie Rowe and Chad Daybell. And then after we're going to learn and hear a little bit more about how Julie Rowe and Chad Daybell's belief system functioned and how they would actually work together. So take a listen. Yep. And they're continuing on their dark path to destroy people, basically. You know what I mean? Like Adolf Hitler. If he was reincarnated, who would he be today? I don't know. But Oprah he wasn't a good person then. Right. So. <laughs> Oprah didn't like Oprah, so maybe. Right. Oh, yeah. Oprah, Oprah was somebody she had mentioned, but I don't remember who she said she was. She didn't Oprah like Oprah. Was, so Oprah was evil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's confirmed. So do you think that the Oprah Eve being evil, did that start with Julie then? And not Chad? <laughs> yeah, I think that was definitely from Julie. <laughs> All these people I had heard were mostly from Julie. A lot of the people in the inner group who I had heard who they had been before, um, Chad I knew agreed, and but it was more, it came from Julie's inner circle. But Chad knew and he had talked to a lot of these people himself. They would go to his house and discuss this with him. Like, and I don't know... If they ever felt like, hey, I feel like I'm Alma the Younger. Chad, am I Alma the Younger? Like, I don't know how it ever got brought up with these people. Or yeah. if Chad was like, you are Alma the Younger. Well, no, we know specifically of one example where Chad showed up to this person's house and said, okay, I'm here to talk to you about multiple probations. What do you want to know? He had a briefcase, pulled yeah, out a bunch true. of notes, and he said, okay, what do you want to know? And this person's like, well, like, who was I? What, you know, what did I do? What did my wife do? And he's like, okay, well, I'll tell you, here you go. Bing, bing, bing. You're so-and-so and you're, you did this yeah, and true. you lived then. That's and true. He did do that. He had all kinds of notes on him that he had prepared and showed up and just said, here you go. This is who you are. Yeah, that's true. So do you feel that, that this belief 
system. Let's uh-huh. call it a system. Yeah. Did it start with Julie Rowe? Uh, Most of these ideas, in my opinion, were hatched the same time. Like, it seems to me like Chad and Julie would both receive something right about the same time, like within a short period of time from each other. And they would call each other, call each other and then say, hey, what do you think about this? What do you know about this? Oh, yeah, you know, I just had this and this and this is what I think. Oh, yeah. And, you know, they'd fill in the blanks and the other person would fill in the blanks. The other person didn't have and they would come to an agreement. That's what that means. But we could be wrong. So I don't know. That was speculation. Yeah. It feels like it was a group effort. You speculate. Oh, yes. Yeah. It was a group effort to come up with this belief system. They were both involved and they both spread it around to their different groups. Yeah. And now I am going to end by sharing Eric Smith's full statement. Eric, thank you for sending this. Sometime in June or July of 2017, I stumbled across a belief system that sounded like reincarnation. I don't remember where it came from, but I think it was mentioned in several different podcasts and websites I had visited. My curiosity grew and I began looking in the scriptures to verify the possibilities of this as a lost doctrine. I found before long that it was actually scriptural, but had likely been scrubbed out by Emperor Constantine in the events surrounding that infamous Council of Nicaea. I performed a lot of research and asked the Lord questions along the way and found out for myself that it is indeed a true doctrine. Before long, I was sharing this belief system I had come to know of as multiple probations with a couple close friends, one of which was Julie Rowe and another who was named, name redacted. Julie felt as I did, but this other person resisted it for a couple of months. I have a lengthy journal entry from September 13th of 2017 that captured several insights and his new enthusiasm for this doctrine. He became even more studious in the doctrine than me, and I wrote his coattails for a while as he learned new things, much of which did not resonate with me as true. He told me he pitched the concepts to Chad Daybell, who at first resisted it, and after another conversation or two, Chad took to it really well. Before long, Chad and I began sharing our thoughts and beliefs about it, and I found that he had grown overzealous, developing a numeric ranking system of light and dark, testing his neighbors, church members, and leaders, and so on. Some of these thoughts came from some forums on a social media platform known as LDS Freedom Forum, but Chad took many of those thoughts and changed and added things to the ideas, This is about the time I would say Chad slipped into what I call his tier three belief system, which I can explain more if we do an interview. I listened to Chad and this other person and their ideas, believing some and discarding others. Meanwhile, I had my own journey of beliefs, which were more grounded in the scriptures and what I considered at that time to be authoritative sources. My thoughts were compiled with a friend named Greg Christensen, who I wrote a book with entitled Multiple Probations, A Lost Doctrine Remembered. I felt the scriptural nature of our arguments put me on solid ground. Meanwhile, Chad had found a necklace at church one day and began using it to help him in his work of classifying people and doing family history, which was a code name for basically prying into people's personal lives and determining who they had been and whether they were light or dark individuals or not. I went along with some of what he was doing, but never felt good about the light and dark classification system. I often asked Chad his thoughts about various historic figures and current pop artists or politicians, and we would toss ideas around. But a culture of Chad has the final say on who is who grew out of this. Before long, Chad was going to select individuals' homes where he would share his discoveries with them, me included. By this time, I had taken my own questions to the Lord and learned some things about my own personal history, which he confirmed, but he added some names to the list, which I did not get from the Lord. One of those names was Isaiah, which was suggested to Chad and Julie Rowe by this person. I wrestled with that, but eventually started to own it. Today, I do not believe that is true. 
I do believe in the doctrine of multiple probations, eternal lives, or even reincarnation, but with some major differences. The reality is most religions in the world and most inhabitants of the world believe in reincarnation with varying elements. I think it is wrong to conflate the murderous and lustful choices of a single man with a doctrine that is inherently beautiful, speaks of second chances, spiritual ascension, and increasing light and growth opportunities. Concerning your comment about spiritual wyvery, I honestly do not know what that is, but when you understand the possibility of having lived forever, you open the door of possibly having had other spouses at various times in history. Realizing that possibility, I have found it best to be present in this life and not dwell on possibilities of having other spouses and certainly do not try to find and connect with them. I am grateful for my eternal marriage with my sweetheart. Eric Smith, July 28th, 2021.